What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. I'm sitting here with Ty Magner. Ty, how you doing, man? Doing great. Thanks for having me on, John. Yeah, yeah. So, so where are you at right now? What's going on? I'm in Athens, Georgia. Sitting Athens. Athens. Yep, Athens, Georgia. Not far from where uh, you said you were from Greenville or living in yeah, Greenville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So originally from Rock Hill, but spent most of my time in Greenville. So yeah. Um, so cool, man. So you're pretty bummed about Athens Twilight being canceled, I guess, for the most part. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's what keeps me going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think it's supposed to uh I think it's supposed to be back on for this year though in August. Yeah. So uh it's gonna be later. It's gonna be a totally different scene too, because typically it's in April. And all the students are there, but they're kinda they're going through finals and all that stuff. So it's sure. not it's crazy, but I don't think it's as crazy as it could be. Whereas in August the students are back and it's right before football season. So I think it might be a, it might be a more of an insane party at Athens Twilight this year. <laughs> Which is kind of nuts to think about. Like it's like, yeah. I mean, you, like you saw cycle cross worlds just this past weekend and it was like empty. empty. Yeah. Just empty. Which is, it's, which is pretty hard, heavy. Man. But uh, yeah. So let's, before we dive into the new team switch and stuff like that, let's just dive into who you are, how you got started. I know there's like, there's a pack of you Magners, right? Like <laughs> bike handling guys, bike guys, and then you yeah. guys got into cycling. So how did that all start? So my uh, my brother got a mountain bike when he was, I think he was 16 years old. He got in a car accident and uh, he was a soccer player. And the doctors told him, he hurt his back and the doctors told him to get a bike, to keep up the fitness. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think I was, I must've been seven or eight. I'm a good, good bit younger than my oldest brother. And uh, I was just trying to follow him around <laughs> yeah, on the bike pretty much. And then it was, it was a pretty slow, I played soccer a lot and I wasn't, it's not like I was racing bikes when I was nine years old, like some of these guys. Yeah. But uh, some buddies of mine started making bike videos called bad biking. I think yeah. they're on YouTube still. <laughs> still on YouTube? I think they're on YouTube. And yeah. uh we just slowly started mountain bike racing and then that led to people donated a road bike and started doing some group rides and one thing led to another. And then I was racing on the road with my brother Yeah, <laughs> and uh, my middle brother rides and he raced for a little bit and he's a doctor here in town in Athens. And then Casey, my oldest brother worked for the Hincapie cycling team for years as the head mechanic. Yeah. Right on the, it's kind of a family affair for a while, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I mean, I remember you guys all rolling up to races, and I think even your brother, that was the doctor. I mean, he would just he would just pop into a race every yeah. once in a while, right? <laughs> yeah, like he would literally just pop in, and I even think you know what Casey's the mechanic, and so yep, he would yep. even pop in, especially on some yeah, of those handicap races for a while. Yeah, after, he was a serious racer for a few years. He did pretty well in some in some of the crit scene stuff, and. uh and even when he stopped doing it, he was a pilot and he would still go and race. I think one year, you remember that myogenesis team? Out of yeah, that? I think so. It was pretty early. It was like 2008 or something. Okay. Maybe. But they did Twilight and Casey didn't even ride or train. And he was <clears> the <throat> only one to finish. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> like wow. off the couch, just hopped in. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. So... I mean, so you've you've ridden for like probably some of the coolest teams I would think of. Like, I mean, you got Mountain Khakis, you know, Team oh. Type One, and then uh, Hankappy. You rode for Hankappy for quite some time. Then you went to United Healthcare, which you know the Blue yeah. Train was always. I mean, I mean, probably around your age, that was a dream to be a part of that train. Yeah, it was, and so, yeah. And then, then Holowesco, and then on to Rally. So we got to find out which which has been your favorite team out of those and why by far the Hincapie years yeah yeah no why qu- is that no question yeah <laughs> <laughs> we had i mean it was it was basically a group of best friends that got together and created that team which was right. i don't think any other team in the world could say that yeah and uh, we were really good too which made it even more fun <laughs> yeah yeah i've been in some races with you guys where it would literally just like one guy would go lap the field and then the next guy would go and lap the field and that was just yeah. i didn't know how to comprehend it it was just uh it was a blast i mean when i got on the team in 2012 we weren't an amazing team but uh 
at the end of that year, I had some offers to go somewhere else. And Thomas Craven, the director, he's like, man, what do we need to do to make this thing happen? I was like, well, you need to bring in Joey Roscoff, Oscar Clark, and both two Georgia guys. We were all living in Athens together. And he did that, and then it just skyrocketed, man. We we just yeah. had the best of time. The years were – they flew by, really. Yeah, no, <laughs> Unfortunately, awesome. you don't realize it until now. You look back, and you're like, holy shit, that was – those were the freaking, those are the days racing bikes. That was awesome. No, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so now, you know, how did this whole move to Legion happen? Like, how did this all start? I mean, you would think that you, Justin and Corey would be straight up rivals. Like, I mean, <laughs> like I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even think you guys would get along. So yeah. let's, where, where did that relationship kind of kindle? And then how were they able to go, Hey, no more rally, dude, you should come ride with us. Well, it was so Justin and I have always we've been rivals, I guess, but not not I would it's not a bitter rivalry at all. Yeah. Um there's been times where he's beaten me, I've beaten him, we've bumped elbows and we're always so uh what's the word? We're just cool with each other after the race. Cordial. Yeah, yeah. cordial. Yeah, just cordial. And uh always get some beers together after and have a good time and uh the past couple of years i could i could i was been able to tell that justin's trying to create something super cool yeah and uh i talked to him we didn't talk we didn't talk a ton but every mm-hmm. once or twice a year i'm like justin keep me in the loop you know just let me know what you have going on because yeah. i think it's i think it's awesome you know and i always love doing crits every most of the teams i've been on Crits have never been the focus. A little bit on, I guess, on UHC, the one year I was on, that was the focus. But I've never been on a team fully focused on racing crits. And uh, so I just let them know. I was like, man, let me know. If, you, if you're if you stepping up, it's getting bigger and bigger, let me know. I'd love to be involved. And yeah. uh, it was kind of bizarre how it all worked out over the summer this year during COVID. Because... I was at home, wasn't racing, and it, it came time. I think it was July, maybe July yeah. or August. Rally had an opportunity, basically, to get back to Europe and do. There was five races, five one-day races in Belgium and France. And I was like, "No, I'm not going. I don't want to do that." That yeah. doesn't sound. It it just doesn't seem to. It doesn't really make sense to me. Why would I go over there? hang out in the UK for two weeks, quarantined. Quarantined, yeah. Like you're, and, and for people that don't know, because I know a few people that were on rally, like they were in a house. Yeah. When they when they were quarantined, it wasn't like, okay, ride by yourself. It was like you were riding on a trainer inside for two weeks. Yeah, which isn't, all right, it's not that big of a deal. But I'm like, I'm at home. I'm really enjoying it. I'm at, I've been at home for months for the first time in probably over 10 years. Yeah. This is awesome. Um, and why would I want to go to Europe for over two months to race four or five one day races? I don't want to do that. And so I said, no. And then about a month later, I realized I wasn't getting rehired. (laughs) (laughs) That's when you got the boot. I think so. I don't know. But was it, well, let me ask you this. And then, then like, we don't have to dive too deep into it. Cause I know rally, there's a few people from rally that listen to the podcast, but I mean, I, don't, I, think, I think they would. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, it's all, it's all, it's all in good fun, but like it was, it, it was cordial, I guess. Right. Like you were, you were kind of content with it or, or how do you feel about it? I guess more I was less. content with it only because, yeah. um, I had re- I reached out to Justin before all this even happened. Yeah, I was like, man, let me know. You know, I want to make I want to see if we can make it work out. And then it was it was it was really bizarre how the decisions I started to make were going to influence my career with Rally or my non-existent career with Rally. Yeah, um, I didn't even really notice I was making them. You know, I got a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and before that before this year i was like no we can't get a dog you know we're both yeah. gone all the time and we got a dog and it was just like well 
I want to be home. You know, I want to take care of this dog now. So it was yeah. just little things that I started to do that I realized I was doing. And then, yeah, I got the call. They're like, yeah, we're not going to give you a contract. And it was a little weird because I did pretty well on the team. Yeah. But, um, I was like, all right, I understand. I'm not going to fight you about this. You know, mm-hmm. we had a good run. Um, and I was more, I was way more excited to race and ride with Legion. In the end, yeah. that, that was another thing. It's like, okay, I'm making significantly an amount of less money, but I'm excited to race and I'm excited to ride. And it's going to yeah. be a shitload of fun. <laughs> yeah, because did you ever ride, did you ever ride Athens on rally? No, never did. You probably have an opportunity this time around. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's just... So- there was times I, I I did a few USA crits in 2019. Just flew myself out there to go do them, you know, because yeah. it, it was fun. And I don't know. It was a uh, it was a weird way to end, to end things with rally. But I talked to one of the directors last week, so I mean, I don't think anything. No. Yeah. Part of feelings, you know. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like it's 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 kind of a weird year. I mean, yeah. I feel like people are even getting hired weird, and people are getting let go. To, in weird ways because it's just like hey you didn't really do anything this year to get fired but you didn't really rehire you yeah yeah yeah. so um but we were talking i was i was on a ride the other day with a buddy of mine and and, you know we've been watching legion post stuff Mm -hmm. and i have a feeling they're probably going to be one of the most well-supported teams at least from the looks of it outside looking in than probably any team in america right now like yeah, it just yeah. seems like nobody can get bikes or people are reusing things from last year because yeah. of the, the budgets and whatever else. And so it looks like, it looks like Legion's going to rock up pretty decked out. For the yeah, most for part. sure. Yeah. I mean, they already got the, you've seen the special, the new, the new specialized, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Like, and that's, that's what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. It's, the sponsors love, love the team, you know? Yeah. It's uh it's just a really cool thing to be a part of because everybody yeah. is so excited, you know, and it, it seems Justin and Corey have both been, they've been working really hard for a few years to get this off the ground. And for sure. uh, and a lot of people cool. talk, a lot of people talk, but the, they're probably some of the first people that I've ever seen talk and succeed and like yeah, actually they, walk it through. It. So, so it's now it's about a, it's like, all right guys, you got the team here now. Let's see if we can, just not, you know, over overreach it. So yeah. just kind of keep it here and kill it for a year or two, for sure. Yeah. And then see what's after that. Yeah. And so with, like, with all that being said, like, I mean, you know, some people might listen to this and, and hear it from you as like, almost like, oh, okay, he's retiring. Like, he's taking a step back. It's no longer a rally. It's just Legion. He's doing it for fun. But let's let's hear like i mean because like i know justin's no bullshit like he yeah. he wants to win bike races at the end of the day yeah he wants to have fun and look good doing it but he wants to win yeah. so uh how has this kind of changed your goals and, and your ambitions and and what are those yeah it's, i mean it's definitely a different uh even mentally i've struggled a bit mentally the past few months getting ready for this year because it's it is totally different you know i'm not racing right now it's going to be i'm going to be racing in most likely july yeah and it's going to be crits so it's it, it's hard to get out and do like freaking five hours you know i'm like fuck this yeah is, <laughs> it's brutal this is tough you know i'm ready i'm craving some racing because i haven't raced in over a year well it's even more brutal like wondering is that race in july even going to happen because i'm dealing with that right now like i'm supposed to be going to south america potentially in yeah. in eight weeks and I have a good feeling that's not going to happen, but yeah. you, you can't like, what are you going to do? You know, you, I can't just start drinking and go completely off the rocker and like have fun. Oh, I have to have to take it serious. Yeah. So, so. It's been, that's been difficult, but uh, I'm all in on this team to help Justin and Corey win. I'm, that's what I was telling them over the summer. I'm like guys, I've the only race I really want to win is Athens twilight. I don't care about going to Europe and winning a stage of tour Britain or a stage. I don't really care. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't make me want to go ride. (laughs) Yeah. But 
I would love to see those guys just win everything and anything they can, you know? Yeah. And so let's be honest too. Like, uh, so there's been, there's always been this hype around Athens. And if you guys don't know what Athens is, you've heard about it on the podcast before. We've told crazy war stories from it. We've cra- told crazy party stories from it. You can go check in past, past episodes, but, um, <laughs> There's never been somebody from Athens, and they say John Murphy's from Athens, but is he really technically from Athens? Murph isn't from Athens. He lived here for a while. Um, I'm not from Athens either, though. I'm from Griffin, Georgia. But I've lived in Athens on and off for, I guess, 11 years now. Okay. I don't think there's anybody – there's never been somebody to win Athens Twilight that has – born raised resided yeah resided in athens or okay a student or yeah something like that tina pick okay exception yeah yeah but Uh, in the men's race because i think that was like for even frank trevieso was like kind of that question mm -hmm. mark of is he from athens yeah he's podiumed a few times and so so yeah i I was just i've always wondered that because i remember when john murphy won and i was just like i think you got second right yeah third that year and I remember thinking, like, I don't, I still don't think somebody from Athens has won, right? But I guess, I guess we've kind of cleared that kind of chaos up. So, <laughs> um, that being said, what's your craziest story from Athens? I mean, I'm, I, I know I have, I have some that are that are PG, I have some that are rated X and R, and I mean, Athens can turn into a wild time, and so I like to make sure that we relive that and bring that out because. God knows what's going to happen with this virus. There might not be any spectators. And usually it's like <laughs> six deep in the rows at Athens. Craziest story from Athens. Post race or race or. Oh, let's, let's do race and post race. Cause I, I know the race is always nuts in itself. So yeah, my craziest race. Was that the first year I did it? So 2010, I think I was. 18 years old and I had just moved to Athens and I was living with my brothers and I was friends with all my friends were basically mid guys that are 26, 27. And yeah, I, yeah. I thought they were old as hell at the time, <laughs> <laughs> which was pretty funny. But, uh, I was on locos. Do you remember that team? Oh yeah. Grill and pub, man. Yeah. Locos grill and pub. Uh, but we were the local team and, I would, yeah, like I said, I was 18 and I was just kind of terrified. But we line up at the start and it is freaking pissing down rain, thunderstorm, yeah. lightning. And uh, I got a call up, which was pretty crazy. And I'm sitting there, I'm lined up next to, I think, Menzies and Hilton Clark. Oh, man. And uh, we start racing. And, and Menzies back in the day looked like a freaking superhero. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, he was just big was dude. Superhero. That guy's a. <laughs> Menzies is the man. Yeah. He's that guy. But uh, race starts about 20 minutes in. I find myself in the break with Menzies, Hilton Clark, Ken Hansen, Luca Damiani, and somebody else. I can't remember who it was. And uh, we were gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, holy shit. I'm on uh, – on clinchers like shitty tires with clinchers you know yeah and uh just going pool for pool and uh ended up getting fifth and it was just it was totally insane you know and that's what got me on team type one was yeah after that i talked to phil sutherland and then uh that is for sure my craziest race story because that was just ridiculous i couldn't believe yeah it. <laughs> i mean because we're 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 close in age and so like i'm trying to put myself because i started when i was like 18 so i'm trying yeah, to think yeah. of like 18 year old me being in a breakaway with those guys <laughs> i would just i wouldn't know how to handle it so uh so that sounds nuts in itself so what's the craziest post race story and this you can be as crazy as you want to be with this i mean if joey roscoff got arrested for you know jumping off a speaker or something like i don't know you, you'd be as crazy as you want with this it had to have been something in 2017 after Murph won. We were out. We were out to like four in the morning that night. But <laughs> I can't remember to be honest, man. That's probably the best story. Yeah, I mean, I can't it's, remember. There's always a party. You're all. You're always pretty drunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the shitty thing about it is, uh, you got to race Roswell the next day. 
Oh yeah, the, or like what is it, Commerce as well? Or they, commerce, yeah, or it's Ros- Commerce or Roswell. They, they yeah. switch between them. Yeah, those are the. But they do, and well, the crazy thing about it is it's at like one p.m. Yeah. So you're, yeah. it's the earliest you've woken up the entirety of Speed Week, and then yeah, you're you're pretty much out there the next day. Everybody's hung over it. The reeks of you know piss and fucking alcohol. Yeah. It's it's. I'll, I'll give you a crazy story about it. So we. That same that same year at Speed Week 2017, we did um, Walterboro. Did you do Walterboro that year? 27. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. So it's out in the middle of nowhere, South Carolina, near the yeah. ocean. Yep. It takes. I mean, you drive the the darkest roads you can imagine to get there from Athens, and uh, yeah, it's probably all back roads. Like you probably don't even see. Oh, it's all back roads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, me, Murph, Miguel, and Oscar. And maybe Mac Brennan drove from Athens to Walterboro. And we get done with the race. I think Miguel won. And we're sitting around the race. And we're like, well, if we leave now, we could probably get back to Athens before the bars close. <laughs> 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 so we're racing back to Athens. And it's like 1230, 1 in the morning, going through all those dark roads. Yeah. And we get back to uh, – we get back to downtown at 1.59 a.m. just before last call. Then have oh, a beer man. outside of Walker's. Oh, right geez. on. The and then, and the then you have Spartanburg the next day, which you guys yeah, probably won Spartanburg. that next day as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. That was pretty fun. That was a really fun week, actually. That's really awesome. awesome. No, so, I mean, you, you know, a lot of, a lot of people call you a crit guy. And I think in 2019, you know, at least from my opinion, from watching you ride, like that was a time that like, okay, is he going to go to the world tour? Like, is he going to start, try doing this stuff on the road? And, uh, you got fourth in the national championship road race. Like it's like one of the hardest races. I mean, just course wise, it's insane. (laughs) And so what was your prep like for that? Like, I mean, you know, you're a crit sprinter and it's like, obviously you had some sort of ambition or did you just go into it not expecting that result at all? And next thing you know, it's like, Hey, this is where I'm at. No. So I've had over the years, I've always, I'm always good in the summertime, no matter my fitness in the spring or the winter, I'm always all right in the spring. And then I take a few weeks off in the summertime. I'm, I'm always good. So I always like nationals for that reason. And, um, I like that course and I've trained my ass off basically did a lot of racing in the spring, maybe too much to be honest. And then came home and tried to lose a shitload of weight, which I didn't do it healthily. That's for sure. (laughs) I basically, it was, that was a really weird time. So my girlfriend at the time and I broke up and I moved back to Georgia and I was just hanging out with friends in Athens, drinking beers and doing group rides. That's all I did. <laughs> there okay. was no specific training. I would leave at 4 p.m. to go ride, ride for a couple hours, hit the group ride at six, and we'd just smash each other and then just go drink some beers after the ride. And I would have like a salad. <laughs> <laughs> so your carbohydrate density was all in beer. It was all in beer. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, which creature comfort? I mean, that's that's, that's what it. Here you go, right here. It's pretty solid. Yeah. yeah have they? Have they? Do they not have you endorsing it yet? Not yet. We need oh, to get man. on though. Yeah, I'll cut this clip out. Maybe I'll post it and lie about the <laughs> listenership or some shit. <laughs> oh man, but there was nothing too specific about it, man. I was riding in the heat of the day, trying to lose a little bit of weight and just having fun and. uh I flew to Luxembourg after Winston Salem and did a tour of Luxembourg and was could tell I was basically in the form of my life there and came home and then I went up to Tour de Bose and was leading the race for nearly the whole race and I climbed up Mount Megantic I think I was like fifth on the mountaintop finish and I was time trialing well and uh, I was pretty excited for nationals and. Uh, we rode a pretty good race as a team and then it basically was me and Robin Carpenter and Colin Joyce in the end. And I totally regret how I played the last lap because I, I didn't feel a thing. 
you know, I felt so freaking good. And yeah. I really regret not just attacking the group I was with and going up to the front because I think I could have won the race. But I yeah. was just, I think I was still just kind of timid about even being there, you know, and for sure not realizing how good I was at the time. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, let's be honest. Like, it's what's funny to hear you say that you were like shocked that you were still there. It's like, you know, a lot of people look at you as a crick guy. A lot of you get yeah. look at you as a sprinter, and like, it's a sprinter's course, kind of, I guess, right? Like, it's a sprinter from a group usually, right? I don't really know how to explain yeah, it. It's, like, no, it's hard, man. It's got some yeah. climbing, and you gotta, yeah, you, you definitely need some endurance to get to the end of that race. Yeah. Um, and the whole, and the, it's funny when people just call me a crit guy and it's like, yeah, I'm good at crits. They're not, <laughs> yeah. I've always been good at crits. You know, there's no, for some reason, I've always been able to wrap my head around a crit. I can just get in there and feel exactly what's happening in the race. For Whereas sure. in road racing, I think I just kind of lose focus or something. I don't know, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a, like a with crit game. With crit racing, it's definitely an art. I mean, like some of you guys, like, I mean, it would, it would actually shock some of the guys in the back what your power is. Like, it's not yeah. that high. Yeah. And it would actually shock. And it's all finesse, confidence, and just bike driving. And mm -hmm. and the fact of how you got – and I, I've i never figured it out. Like, I'm just a yeah. time trial dude, uh, pursuit guy. Like, I'll just mm -hmm. pretty much stick to the track because, like, I can't figure out how to ride the washing machine well enough, to be <laughs> honest. Um, but – but yeah, so that that all kind of being said, I mean, you guys are pro. Um, yeah. Do you have do you have ambitions uh, to go for the road race then? Yeah, for sure. I talked to Justin about that, uh, and that was one of the things I brought up. I was like, well, I mean, I still, I mean, I would, it's going to be tough without some of the spring racing that yeah. some of the world tour guys do. But if you can get motivated for, you know, six seven weeks to really nail down some training for that race you can you're able to do it especially in the heat of yeah. georgia and tennessee you know if you're oh yeah you're literally you in a super motivation. bowl yeah it's insane it's man. so hot yeah so if you can find the motivation to do it you can be competitive there just because it is such a just such a wacky race you know yeah. there's no there's no real tactics to it and there's you got to be able to read the race a little bit, but it's kind of a shit show in general. So if you can get your fitness high enough and you basically can always be there. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so last question, so I don't keep you all night so you can continue to enjoy your creature <laughs> comfort. Right. Um, if you could have a beer, you know, cause you seem to like your beer mm -hmm. or a coffee uh, with one person dead or alive, who would that person be? uh why and uh how would you have your beer or your coffee hmm so because i understand that the drinks kind of work on the person right so like yeah depending on the person you'd rather have a beer or a coffee with like yeah. i'd probably rather have like to put it in your perspective i'd probably rather have a coffee with hink happy mm -hmm. and a in and, and uh or yeah coffee with hink happy and a beer with lance armstrong like that's the way I look at that, you know, yeah. two different people. Yeah. Huh. That's a good question. I don't I didn't think about that. I think I'd like to have a, uh, a beer with Barack Obama. Wow. That'd be I cool. I think that'd be pretty, pretty interesting and just pretty cool in general. What kind of beer? I think like a. I feel like you would have to drink like a like a Guinness or a Stout. That's like exactly what I was gonna say. I was gonna yeah. Get heavy and dark. Yeah, just like where you're just chilling <laughs> over it, you know. Yeah, just some. Uh, yeah, nice heavy dark beer with Obama. That would that would be pretty awesome. Why Obama? Just just to chat. Just to chat. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, you see for. A former president, he seems like a pretty down to earth human being. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody you could just talk to, like a normal person, not treating him not treating him as a president, you know. No, yeah, I feel like that's a good point. I mean, we've seen him at like baseball games with baseball hats on. And he's just living yeah. the dream, living the life, dude. Draining so. three pointers, you know. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, 
That's awesome, dude. Well, I wish you the best of luck in your season. And guys, if you haven't already, be sure to check out Legion and uh, check out Ty's social media. It's all going to be in the description below. Other than that, uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.